here's sort of a strange one. Uh, light enters a glass slab of width L, and the index is 1.5, which is typical for glass, and the wavelength of the light is this width L over 10. Okay. And how long does it take a pulse of light to cross the slab in terms of F, the frequency of the light, which they didn't give you? And they don't want the answer to have any C's or L's in it, just numbers and F. Okay, so first let's just talk about the physics of what's going on. So you got to think about what happens when light goes into glass. We're going to say the light at first has a wavelength here of uh, lambda naught. And out here we're in vacuum, right, or air. So N equals 1, and the speed of the light is C, 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. So that's all true. So when light goes into um, the uh, glass, we know that the light slows down slows to uh, the speed is c over n. So it would be c over 1.5 in this problem. When it slows down, it actually gets a shorter wavelength like that. Okay? So shorter wavelength. And the wavelength goes down from lambda naught over n. Okay? So the wavelength gets shorter. You divide by the 1.5. And the frequency stays the same. Say f equals f naught. Whatever it is out here, it's going to be the same thing in there. It has to do this because this has to stay together on the boundary. The charge is moved, so the frequency of this moving up and down on this side and this side has to be the same, but in space they're separate, so the wavelength can change. That's the deep, deep reason. So I want to answer the question of how long, actually just use kinematics is really what I would do. I would say this is a light pulse and I'm tracking its position versus time. I just thought of it this way, that uh, delta x is the speed of light, uh, or is the speed times uh, t. So let's plug in what we know. The distance it went was L, and uh, the speed is c over n, or at speed of light over that 1.5. And uh, let's see, in time is the delta t you want. So you just solve this for delta t. And you get uh, n, you were given, that's 1.5 n L over C. And you say, hey, I'm done. Except they didn't want it that way. They want it all in terms of F. Right? So they haven't thought about F yet. So what we're going to have to do is take this intermediate result here and hold on to it. And how do we express in terms of F? F. So we were told nothing about the frequency, but we just have to use what we know. The standard relationship is that the speed um, equals the frequency times the wavelength. So in terms of in the, in the vacuum region, C equals F naught times lambda naught. And it's also true in the material, in the glass, that uh, C uh, over N, that speed, right, equals F. Same frequency, f times what's the wavelength in there? Uh, lambda over n. So you can see that's true. All we do is divide both sides by n. So how are we going to use all this? So let's go to uh, this one. Right? C, uh, and then we can uh, multiply through by an n. And we see that c equals f. Uh, no, I'm sorry. Let's use, uh, sorry. What am I doing here? Um, Oh yeah, I'm sorry. Let's do this. C equals F. So here we're going to use this one. C equals F naught times lambda naught. And we were told, there it is, is L over 10. We're given the vacuum wavelength. Right? So F naught times L over 10 like that. Right? And we know that F equals F naught. That's what we're going to use. So forget about this. Yeah, forget about that. So we go C equals F times L over 10. The speed of light, if the frequencies, frequencies are the same, times the vacuum wavelength, L over 10. So now we're going to use this and stick it right there. So we weren't allowed to have C in the answer. And you can see it's going to get rid of the L also. So we're going to get delta T is N uh, times L over the speed of light, frequency times um, L over 10. 
simultaneously got rid of the C and it got rid of the L. So in the end, for this silly problem, you get uh, 1.5 from the index times 10 from the wavelength over F. The answer is just 15 over F. So much physical insight. <laughs>